collection of unit bonds. Um, for example, this is our P. And then we study the number of incidences between P and T. That's defined as the number of pairs Q, T inside our set, such that Q intersects T has volume larger than, say, 1 over 10 of the volume of a Q of a unit ball. So in particular, in this example, the number of incidences is 3. Here we have 1, one for this two, uh, rectangle and 1 for this rectangle. And the question we want to study is, can we give an upper bound about the number of incidences? Uh, with Larry Guth, uh, my PhD advisor, and Norm Solomon. Uh, we studied this problem using Fourier analysis. And then we later we'll see an application of such kind of bound also back to Fourier analysis. So let f be sum over functions um, phi q. Phi q is a bump function at each uh, unit ball q. Phi q is 1 on the unit ball q. And the support of phi q is inside 2 times q. So essentially, it's like the characteristic function of q. With, uh, we make it slightly smoother. And then let g equals to sum over phi t. Then we can rewrite that the number of incidences by an integral. So this means uh, less or equal than a constant factor of we integrate f times g. So by writing this number of incidences as an integration, we can do um, we can take Fourier transform. And now what's next? Uh, the next step is to study uh, what's the Fourier transform of g. So g supports on the union of those rectangles. If we have a rectangle t, and the Fourier transform of phi t is essentially support on a dual rectangle t star. I will draw it larger. So the dual rectangle T star has length 1 that corresponds to this direction and has width 1 over r, which corresponds to this direction. So it also use to that characteristic function? Yes. And now g hat is a sum over those phi t hat. But another thing is, since uh, phi t is like the characteristic function, this, the support, the essential support of phi t hat is centered at the origin 0. And now we take the union of all those phi t hat, then it will become the union of the tubes are the rectangles passing through the origin inside roughly the unit ball. 
And the next thing that, as an analyst, we usually do is uh, we decompose into high frequency and low frequency. Oops. So let's say here at some r to the minus epsilon, or some uh, something slightly smaller than one, and we decompose our g. So g into g high frequency and g low frequency. So high frequency is the part of g hat that's outside of this blue circle. And then the observation is that if our omega is on the high frequency, then there are only um, finitely many up to up to epsilon, finitely many uh, directions passing through this omega. So for the G high frequency, we have a very good bound. We have a good L2 bound, and then this will give us a good estimate about the number of incidences. And what happens if we are on the G low frequency? This will imply that we have, we can reduce our problem to a good thickening of the original problem. So it means that we can thicken everything to a larger scale. Um, this is essentially the method that uh, we had to study this problem. Um, this method was uh, inspired by um, inspired by Thomas Oppenheim and also Wien. And it has uh, some consequences in Fourier analysis. For example, the uh, Faulkner distance uh, problem and also the local smoothing problem for wave equations. Sorry, the nature of the result, you mean the, the estimate? Yeah, the bound. Uh, yeah. Um, OK, the bound is, uh, is actually long. So that's why I explained the method <laughs> instead of the bound. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it bounds the number of instances by the number of points and the number of uh, rectangles. So uh, also, after you do this thickening, then do you, do you repeat the operation? Is there, yes. is there an induction there? Yeah, there is an induction. This means that. It's good. We can, if we do an induction, it can close it. Yeah. The good thickening means the following. Um, and today I'm going to talk about an application that's um, related a little bit to number theory. Uh, what time? How much time do I have? Five minutes. Okay, great. Uh, um, so, we, w if we are interested in counting the number of integer solutions. So this means all the uh, n positive integers from 0 to capital N satisfying n1 plus, plus ns equals to ns plus 1 plus n2s. And then all the powers until d. Then the number of um, integer solutions to this, uh, those equations, to this system of equations, equals to the integration of an exponential sum. Um, then, a few years ago, uh, by Borgen, Damit, and Guth in 2016, and then Uli, Trevor Uli, they showed that this is bounded by epsilon is any positive small number times n to the s plus n to the 2s minus. 
one can see that this is the best possible we can hope for. This is uh, called uh, the Vinogradov mean value theorem. And then we look at a different version of it, s s uh, saying that if we look at a smaller in interval uh, on the xd coordinate, and then this is no longer equal. The conjecture says that we should have the following bound. Uh, this is conjecture by uh, Heathrow. Yes, it's sharp. If true. If true. So, what, so the Vinogradov mean value theorem is the case where beta equals to zero. And then for the three dimensional, for, N, for D equals to three, when beta equals to two, it was proved by uh, Bombieri. And if one, and then later uh, in by Bergen using decoupling, they proved for d equals to three and beta equals to two. And this year with um, Triplin Demeter and Larry Guth, <coughs> uh, we showed. Uh, for a range of beta from uh, zero to uh, three halves, also in dimension three. And Heathrow uses uh, this um, estimate to give some um, some improved fourth derivative bound, and give some estimate about the Riemann zeta function. Uh, so here I want, while I'm at IIS, I want to study more about the incidence estimates between different shapes, and then. Uh, apply them to uh, free analysis. Thank you.